are set to preview the 2020 Watertown High School football season with head coach Gavin Webster. Coach, good to have you with us. First thing I want to talk about, and I heard you mention this before we went on the air, 70 players on this year's team's roster, 23 freshmen incoming. Is this the biggest roster you've had at Watertown? Uh, yeah, Tom, it's the biggest roster. We're around, uh, I think, 71, actually. That is fantastic, and uh, I'll go back and talk about that freshman group to start with. We don't always talk a lot about the freshmen, but when you get 23 moving up from those ranks, that's a big number. Talk about that class and what your expectations are for them as they grow and develop. Well, you know, it's a, it's a good class. Not all of them are from Watertown Middle. Some of them got rezoned here through the rezoning. So right. our numbers are at 23. Uh, it's a good core group. Uh, got a few athletes, got a, got a lot of good line, looking linemen in that group. You know, they had a real good, successful junior high campaign over here at Watertown Middle under Coach Job. So they've had some success on the junior high level. So, you know, expectations are gonna be high, you know. Uh, you know, they, they're hard workers in the weight room and they've been very coachable and, and hard workers on the football field thus far. As much as we don't like to talk about it, we've got to address the COVID-19 and how it's affected the offseason. You know, spring practice wiped out. A lot of schools ended early, of course. And talk about how that's affected your offseason. And, uh, you know, do you feel like maybe the team and everything is a little bit behind as you get started in August? Well, yeah, Tom, you know, the good thing about this, everybody's on the same page. You know, right. All the other teams had to do the same thing. So, yeah, when you come in and you're having to start working with, uh, you know, small groups of 10, then – did that a couple of weeks, so we did what we could do, you know, worked out, condition, and then they started letting that up a little bit. And after the dead period, you know, it, it wasn't any more lenient, but we got to work in a little bit bigger group. Still had to take all the pre uh, precautions that, that was uh, necessary, that we're supposed to do every day. And, you know, we were able to get some work done. Now we feel like, you know, I think it's what I told uh, 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 Tommy a minute ago, he said, uh, you know, we were talking about that. and. The, the thing about it was, you know, one week, we don't know if we're playing or when we're playing, then <laughs> right. all of a sudden it springs up on us and we are playing. Right. So uh, some aspects we feel like we're a little ahead, then there's some that we're behind. So, you know, we'll just uh, keep working and uh, trying to improve every day. Coach, I know you lost some good quality players last year, but you got a good core coming back. And, and talk about the importance of that, of having some good seniors on your team that, that kind of know how things work. Does, does that kind of benefit you having that good group back this year? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, th this senior bunch has, you know, been been part of some good football teams. You know, uh, freshmen, they part of a, a nine-win season. Sophomores, 12 wins. Last year, 10 wins. So they know how to win. Uh, and, and a lot of them played you know, played in a lot of those games. So, uh, got some good, uh, got some good athletes coming back. Got a good, got a good core coming back. Uh, you know, we took a hit in the offensive line and defensive line, and but we feel like we got some kids uh, capable and uh, good enough to step up and fill that board right there. That was one thing I wanted to mention: your trenches, because that's where everything starts, particularly on offense. And uh, and talk about some players there that you have, and and maybe talk about the depth a little bit. Is that going to be a concern with some new players that are coming in? Oh. Uh, yeah, you know, depth's always a concern. You know, you can say, well, we got we got 71 players. You shouldn't have any depth issues. Well, when 23 of those are, are freshmen, right. you still have some depth issues, you know. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, we're going to have a few depth issues there, but we're moving some guys around, and uh, there's going to be some guys that's probably playing down there in the trenches that, you know, uh, may be just spark plugs. You know, mm -hmm. it may not be traditional, your defensive or offensive lineman, but – just, uh, just football players. Right. So we're going to create depth that way. Uh, Coach Hackett does a good job with the defense and getting people involved on the defense that can help defense, help his defense. And so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make it work. Let's talk about your quarterback, Braden Cousineau, and he's coming back as a starter for a second year. And a, a young man, frankly, I was impressed with last year, thought as a sophomore, played with a lot of poise. Talk about his growth and development and uh, what you see in his game as he approaches his junior season. Well, you know, uh, Braden did a heck of a job last year. You know, I thought he was poised real well, and uh, he, he surprised me in a lot of aspects. You know, I can I can think back of the Upperman game, you know, uh, which was like week eight, seven or eight, somewhere around there, that I felt like he really grew up. Mm -hmm. and had a heck of a game. You know, we wound up on the losing side of that. But you go back and you look at that football game and you can say that kid grew up. Yeah. So uh, looking offensively, looking to his leadership, you know, uh, uh, 
still, you know, we're not changing anything. You know, we still we still run the same stuff, and uh, you know, we're gonna put a lot on his shoulders this year because he's a year older. Uh, you know, he's been playing in a lot of football games. You know, played in uh, 13 football games last mm -hmm. year, so he's preseason. So, uh, you know, he'll have a few more responsibilities this year, but I think he's very capable of doing it. Coach, you got a lot of weapons to put around your quarterback, and uh, you know Jordan Carter, Jordan Case, and Quantarius Hughes Malone. I know some colleges have been looking at him. You know Isaac Finch. The list goes on and on of the players that that you've got to surround him. Talk about those skill positions, and uh, just you know who's really going to stand out. I know Quantarius is primed for a big season. Both Jordans are. Talk about those players a little bit. Well, you know, uh, you know Quantarius uh, Q, as we call him. You know he had a he had a good season last year. Uh, you know, punt returner, kick returner. We use him a lot, a uh, lot on offense. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be on the field a lot. You know, he's got several colleges recruiting. So, uh, you know, he he's going he's going to have the ball. You know, it, you know he's going to have the football quite a bit and try to get the ball to him every right. which way we can. And you know, it's just uh, he's a playmaker. So you got to get your playmakers of football. Uh, you got your uh, Jordan Casey and Jordan Carter, both uh, defensive players. Also, uh, Jordan Carter. Uh, played behind uh, uh, Deramus Carey last year, so he got a lot of carries. So he's familiar. So he's not he's not green. He knows what's going on, and he's he's uh, picked up on offense really well so far this fall. And of course, Kaysen, Jordan Kaysen, is a two-way player, also played a lot of defense, played a lot of offense for us. So you know he he's gonna uh, he's, his game's gonna be stepped up also. Uh, got um, Brandon Watts played. Uh, he's gonna be playing both sides of the ball this year. Um, played a lot of receiver for us. We're going to look toward him to play a couple spots. Uh, it running back behind, uh, not necessarily be behind Jordan, but they're, they're both going to kind of rotate right there. Right. Plus, he's going to play at his other spot as slot some. So, you know, there's going to be times that both those guys got to be on the field. So, uh, you know, we got we got so many, and I won't say so many, but we got several skill guys back. You know, we're looking at Isaac Finch to step up this year and Kai Halbert. You know they really have picked up their game in this uh, this fall uh, this fall camp and everything, and uh, they're looking to be good leaders, and and they're coming along real well also. Coach, in your region, Watertown Trailsdale's now become a rivalry. It seems like it's it's the game everybody's looking forward to in Region 42A. Last couple of years, you've got them in the regular season, but they've snuck up on you in the playoffs. Is that something maybe this team has used as a chip on their shoulder? I know some of the players have talked a little bit about that. Is that something with that game having developed into such a good rivalry they're looking forward to? Yeah, I mean, I think they are. Uh, you know, we were fortunate enough to beat them last two years in the season and won the region the last two years, but uh, they beat us when it counted in the, in the postseason. So uh, for us to get over that hump and to go further in the playoffs, you know, we, we got we to gotta get over that Trousdale hump in the playoffs. So, right. Uh, you know, I think they, they, these guys, they know what is at stake and they know what's happened to us the last two years. And, uh, you know, I, I would say they're going to have a little chip on their shoulder when it comes uh, week three. I started to say trials is week three, but right now you got to be focused on week one. And that's a pretty good Gordonsville team. has got a lot of skilled players back. They're young, but they got a chance to start a lot of young players due to injury last year. What do you see in that matchup in week one? Hey, I see a, a typical Gordonsville Watertown football game. Uh, they're always, you know, no matter who's up or down, it's always a, a good football game. Coach Clemens and his staff does a great job over there. They got a lot of athletes coming back. So, you know, I, I look for a great football game on August 21st. All right, well, Coach, we're looking forward to Watertown football as we always do, and uh, best of luck to you and the team this year. Thank you, Tom. Coach Gavin Webster joining us as we preview Watertown football for the year 2020. This is DTC Sports.